My name is uh, Shane Williams, President and CEO of West Red Lake. Um, Gwen has really laid out our strategy, but I'll give a little bit more detail on West Red Lake. So West Red Lake came together about um, a year ago. Um, um, just to give people a little bit of overview, it's, our major backer is Frank Justra, who many people will know here in, in, in Vancouver, has a history of building large mining companies. So Frank and myself and the team got together Frank is a big gold bull, as you probably all know. Um, and the idea is, as the gold is moving, as we all believe it will over the next number of years, the idea is to build a mining company to leverage that, that gold price. He's done it before with Leah Gold, Gold Corp, Wheaton River Min Minerals. So this is the next foray into that sort of true trust and tested model. Um, so we got the team together. We looked around uh, Canada to try and find where would we get in and where would we build a strategy. Um, we went to the Red Lake region. Most people will know the Red Lake region in Canada. It's very, very prolific. Um, it's known for its high-grade gold systems in Canada. We also went there because we believe it's been overlooked by the market at the moment. Um, there's a lot of um, activity in areas like the Golden Triangle, other areas that have become very hot. But the Red Lake region has been kind of overlooked. People will remember Great Bear, the Great Bear story, was sold to Kinross for $1.7 billion. And the, the original Red Lake mine was there. That's now run by Evolution. So there's no really junior or developer within that region in which if people want to play on the Red Lake region, um, we, we decided to do that area. Originally, the original mine, why the name West Red Lake was we actually went to the West Red Lake a rest of Red Lake, and we, we picked up a property called the Rowan property. This was a property that was owned by Evolution, um, and we, en we ended up taking a, that property over from Evolution. Um, at that stage, as Gwen pointed out, the previous operator, Pure Gold, was going through some issues with, and the mine, the Madsen mine, had gone into the CCA process. Um, so we started to, I put together a team, we put together a, a technical team to do a bit of due diligence and really understand what went wrong, what were the issues, how could we change it and turn it around. And we put together a team then, you, many of you will know members of that team, we put together a very strong board. Um, Tony McCooch, who people all know, who was very successful with Kirkland Lake. Um, Duncan Middlemass, who's with Westone Mining, built Westone Mining. Hugh Agro, who has experience with Kinross and corporate M&A. Um, and from a management team, myself, I have a lot of experience in building and uh, operating mines. Prior to this, I was with a company, a COO for Skeena Resources, who probably people know for the last five years and built Skeena to what it is. And prior to that, I was with El Dorado and built mines in Turkey, Greece, and the Lamac project in Val d'Or. Um, so a very technical team, put a good board together and a, a very focused team to go forward. Next thing we did after the, the due diligence was done, um, we, we went and we looked at the, uh, the project itself. So this, this project in the previous owner was uh, Pure Gold. It had a market cap of over a billion dollars. It was $1.2 billion at, at, at one stage. There has been $350 million spent on this project. And as Gwen said, we got it for very, very cheap. We, we paid $6.5 million in cash, uh, 40 million shares, and a 1% NSR basically on the project. There's a huge land package. There's infrastructure in place, which I, I will go through. And with the team in place, the asset are ready to go. We feel it's a great um, base to start to build a mining company in Canada. Just to give you some of the infrastructure that's there, as you will see, um, there's underground equipment in place, there's double ramp access, there's excess tailings capacity, there's a mill, an 800 ton a day mill, and there's a 1200 meter shaft on the site. Um, and there's water treatment, and most important, there's permits in place. This has all its permits in place, ready to go. There's just a picture of the mill that's already there. As you see, it's brand new. It's just been, it's just been uh, constructed. It, it was commissioned and operated. They operated for eight months before they went into the CCA process. It's um, basically, it's very good recovery. It had a 95% recovery um, in place. Again, Gwen touched on this, some of the previous um, challenges of the mine. Um, project financing, the group took on a lot of debt. 
Um, the debt had a lot of covenants, particularly around when they needed to be in production. So that forced them to make a lot of decisions. They put a lot of the capital that they should have put into the mine, they deferred it and it became OPEX. So they pushed a lot of the CAPEX into the mine. Um, and these systems in Red Lake, um, people might be aware, but they're, they're very deep systems, but they're very narrow vein. So they need a lot of definition drilling, understanding of the geology and the ore body. So unfortunately, they didn't put a lot of effort into that. They underutilized the amount of drilling they needed, so they didn't have a good understanding of the ore body. Um, so all those reasons we saw them. So we saw, as, as Gwen said, these are very fixable. We, we could put together a team who, who we believe can fix this. Um, I'll talk about the ore body a little bit. You can see there the lower grade portion of the ore body in, in the number two area. This is the majority of the mining that was done on the previous operator. Um, and it, for, for a number of reasons, the systems in Red Lake go very, very deep. You can see that the bottom of the shaft is down at 1,200 meters. That's the defined ore body as we speak now. They went into an area called the McVeigh zone, which is much higher in the system. And unfortunately, it's lower grade. Um, and the average grade of that was around three gram material. Um, and, and obviously they didn't get the recoveries they wanted, they didn't get the amount of gold they wanted. And I'll also point out that during the startup, COVID happened. So most mines in Canada and the world were affected by COVID. So that didn't help the process of them trying to start getting people, spare parts, etc., to ramp up. All those considered the challenges of the, of the pure gold team. Um, our focus a little bit is a little bit different. There is development done underground now. There's a lot of development done, and we're, our plan is to go down into the system itself and really work out that higher grade zone and do a lot more definition drilling in that higher grade zone. Um, the shaft, as you will see there, is in, is in good condition for a small amount of capital. That shaft could be put back into operation. So you'll see a zone down there called the eight zone. It hasn't been very well defined, but that really is a, a, an eight zone. That zone is a 30 gram ore body. So that's a very high grade ore body that sits at the bottom of the shaft, it was previously mined, but the previous operator never got to it. We're dewatering the shaft at the moment and we feel we can get down there and mine that ore body. So there's a lot of ore still left in this ore body. The, the previous operator never, never went near it. Uh, just to give you some of the highlights, you'll see very, very high grade ore body. Um, you have 34 grams over me very mineable widths. So this is a high grade ore body in Red Lake region. Um, there's also extensive uh, regional exploration across the property. Um, there are a number of smaller deposits, Wedge, Fork, Gap, Russet South, who the, the previous operator wanted to d uh, develop out. But again, with the Madsen and the issues they had, they focused on Madsen and they never went to that area. Um, so a lot of exploration potential across the area as a potential opportunity. So our strategy, we have the Rowan property on the other side of the lake. There's 800,000 ounces at about nine grams on the Rowan property at inferred indicated level at the moment. Um, and we have the Madsen project, just over two million ounces, again, at an average grade of around seven grams. Our strategy is a little bit different. We're going to create a hub and spoke model within the Red Lake region. We have the Madsen mill now today. We have the Madsen mine. We'll have the Rowan property. And the idea is to consolidate. There's a lot of small deposits around Red Lake in the region, high grade, but but small deposits that without a mill are really stranded. So the idea is we can do an M&A strategy once we get Madsen going, consolidate a lot of these to feed into the Madsen mill. So whereas the previous operator was just focused on Madsen, we have four, we will have four or five different deposits which to feed the mill. The mill operated at 800 tons a day, and it's easily expandable to 1,500 tons a day. So that gives us the opportunity to grow and build as a platform for growth. The longer term vision is to really go from there and build from there, consolidate in the region and grow to be a mining company in Canada. A little bit on our Rowan property. Um, you'll really see our Rowan property there. It has the east zone and the west zone. We are drilling on the east zone at the moment. You'll see on our website, we're getting very, very high grade. We had uh, grades like a thousand grams over half a meter. We've had 70 grams over eight or nine meters. So very, very typical Red Lake system. The deeper we go, the better grades we're having. Um, and we're only starting to scratch that 
ore body. We haven't got down depths below 500 meters at the moment, and these systems typically run very deep. A little bit on our capital structure, we have about 207 fully diluted million shares outstanding. Our market cap today is probably around 100 million at the moment, Canadian, and we have $18 million in cash. You can also see some of our shareholders Frank Euster is the, main, the uh, 12%, Sprouter 23% shareholder, Van Eck is 6.5%, other institutions. So we're a very, very strong institutional holder with long-term shareholders. There's about 30% retail in the market. Most of the shareholders, very long-term, will be with the company for a long time as we grow. And uh, we, as I said, there's a resource statement, about two, just over 800,000 ounces at, at Rowan and just over two million ounces of high-grade material at Madsen. And just on time, thank you very much, West Red Lake.